Hi, my name's Baz Kinder and I'm from Wellington PPM. We're Microsoft Gold Partners specializing in project and portfolio management and we've also got a silver competency in learning. Today we'll be looking at Microsoft Project Server 2010 and specifically we'll be focusing in on work allocation and team collaboration. Before doing that, let's have a look at the evolution of Microsoft Project. So back in 987, Microsoft released the desktop scheduling tool and at that time it was primarily geared towards individual project managers. As organizations have grown in maturity, as more and more people have wanted visibility of what's happening on project, and as the need to collaborate on projects has come about, Microsoft released Project Server. So we're currently on version 2010, which is the fifth release. So it's quite a mature solution. It's not just me saying that. These are all server findings of Gartner. In this year's MarketScope 2011 report, where they look at all of the leading players in the project and portfolio management space, they gave Microsoft Project Server 2010 a strong positive rating. Now, the thing that sets Microsoft apart from some of the other vendors in the strong positive category are that Microsoft are the only suppliers that allow you to deploy their solution either in-house, using your own architecture, or to deploy it as software as a service. Whilst everyone else in the strong positive category only allows you to deploy their solution as software as a service, hence tying you in either to monthly contracts or annual contracts. Looking at some of the quotes from Gartner, they also say that Project Server 2010 is a landmark release for Microsoft because it's in this release in which they include SharePoint 2010 as a foundation for things such as workflow, document management and collaboration. They also comment on the fact that Microsoft's licensing is very cost competitive. Let's have a look at the overview of Microsoft Project 2010 and have a look at the components that make up the solution set. So centrally you have Microsoft Project Server 2010. Now that's really a central repository for project related information, whether that's your project schedules, your enterprise resource pool, templates, anything project related, it's held within Project Server. On a day to day basis to interact, most users will use what is known as Project Web App, shortened down to PWA. Depending on what group you belong to, whether you're an executive, project manager or resource manager, you will go to exactly the same URL. However, thanks to security trimming, you can control not only what people see, but also what people can do within PWA. So you might determine that the only group allowed to see the resource center, for example, are the resource managers. Now, whilst within PWA, project managers can do some light project scheduling, they would probably prefer to use Project Professional 2010 as that offers more functionality. Now, there is a breakdown of functionality available on the web. If you would like it, then please contact us at Wellington PPM and uh, we can send you that document. Last but not least, you can also integrate Project Server 2010 with other Microsoft solutions, as well as other line of business systems. Drilling down further into Project Server 2010, you can see that there are two components that make up the actual solution itself. Before I go into more detail about the actual components, let me just make it clear that not every organization will deploy, first of all, both components, or secondly, every piece of functionality that's available within Project Server. It's always configured and scaled to match the environment. Let's have a look now at a very high level at the two components. The first one is concerned with top-down portfolio management. This is where projects are proposed, it's where business cases can be built, and it's where projects can then ultimately be prioritized and either approved or rejected based upon whether or not they align to corporate strategy and what kind of return on investment they will provide. The second component, which is something that we are focusing on today, is concerned with bottom-up project management or project execution. It's where you would do your day-to-day -day project management activities of project scheduling, resource management, reporting, and so on. Just before I delve into the live demo, let me give you a quick rundown on what we'll be seeing today. So we'll be seeing work allocation via the build team function. We'll see how the work is assigned to named individuals. We'll then see the project manager publishing the project, thus pushing the work out. And through the my work section, we'll see how individuals would view their work and submit updates. And we'll see from the project manager's perspective how they would receive those updates and how they can either approve or reject those through the approval center. And here we are now in the demo environment. I've already opened up an Internet Explorer page with the PWA homepage which is what we see in front of us now. So Project Web App, otherwise known as PWA, presents you with a quick access tool menu bar here. Now, I'm currently logged in as a administrator, so every single option available is presented to me. I can see my work, projects, resources, reports, and settings. Had I been logged in as, let's say, a team member, the only option available to me might be my work. In the central area of the screen, we see your reminder section. 
informs me that I've got new tasks assigned to me, if there's any outstanding timesheets, approvals, status reports or issues or risks that have been assigned to me to look after. Being based on SharePoint, you can also modify this page and you can add or remove web parts. Let me just quickly click into Project Center. This is where you get visibility of all the projects in your organization. So what I see here is a list of all the projects that I'm currently eligible to see, and we see various KPIs reported against each one of these projects. If I roll over each of these unhappy faces or some of these smiley faces, there's a story behind each and every one, and these are all driven by your own formulas. And you can have as many views as you like. Here are some example ones. Another popular view is a program view, grouping all the projects by program time. For now, what we'd like to do is actually open up a demo project and start building the team to see how the work is allocated. In order to do that, I will select this project here. I'll click on this icon to open the project up in Project Professional, although I could do this in PWA as well. So here we are now in Microsoft Project Professional 2010. So let me give you a very quick tour of the environment before I start building my team. Here we see a list of all the tasks within this particular project, the durations of these tasks, start and finish date, and importantly, under resource names. Currently what we see are generic resources. To understand what generic resources are, please have a look at our other video on resource management. For now, under the resource tab, we will start building up a team by clicking on add resources, build team from enterprise. So what we see now is the build team dialog box. Here on the right hand side, we see a list of all the generic resources that have been assigned to this particular project. And we also see how much work is required from each one of them. What we see here on the left hand side is a list of all the named resources that exist within the enterprise. Now let's say I'm looking for a developer, I would simply select developer, hit match, and I'm presented with a list of all the people in the organization that match that particular role. I could drill down further and say I'm actually looking for a developer that also has specific skills. So in this scenario, I'm looking for a developer who also has knowledge of C++. If I then hit apply, I'm now presented with a shorter list of people that not only have the job title of developer, but also have skills with C++. One thing that we can't see at the moment is availability. If I check this box here, show resource availability, in this scenario, I'll use the project start and finish date. In the real world, you would probably want to drill down to exactly when the work's going to take place. If I hit apply, I can see that I need a developer for 152 hours. All of these individuals have ample availability. For now, I'll set Robert Hardy and I'll hit replace. Now, I might say I'm looking for an analyst and likewise hit match and I'm presented with a list of people that can do that particular role. Let's select Vince West and hit replace. If I click OK, we can now see that Robert Hardy's name appears in the resource list, as does Vince West. Another way in which you could allocate resource or allocate work might be to go into the team planner view and click and drag the work around into different people's diaries. That's just a very high level look at how this particular feature works. What I'd like to do now is file, first of all, save this particular project. That's currently saving, and we can see an indicator down here. Now that that's saved, what I need to do is publish this project so that all the work gets pushed out to Robert Hardy and to Vince West. So click Publish, and down here we see what is going on. So that's now been published, so if I go back to File, Close, yes, I want to check the project back in, and I'll go File, Exit. I'm currently logged in as myself, what I need to do now is log in as Robert Hardy, and then we'll be able to see how the work's been pushed out to Robert. So I'm now logged in as Robert Hardy, and under Reminders, I can see that I've got 27 new tasks assigned to me. I can either click there to go and view the work that I've been assigned, or alternatively, I can click on My Work. In My Work, I see a list of all of the work that I've been assigned. I can see which projects I'm involved with, and separately which tasks I'm involved with as well. Now the project that I had been working on, and the one that I built the team within, was a demo project. And here we can see the task that has been assigned. 
If I click next, I'll go to the right period of time. And here we can see in the calendar view the amount of work that's been planned. So that's 24 hours of work this particular week. And here is where I can come in and put in my actuals. Now, rather than just being a name of a task, I can actually click through and get more information on that particular task. So here we are. It's a detailed uh, task page. This is the interpret requirements task. If I scroll down, we can see there are general details, recent task changes, attachments. This is where any related documentation might be provided. Under contacts, I can see who the uh, project manager is, who the approval manager is, and who's been assigned to work on the task. And I can also see who is involved in the wider project team. If I scroll down further, I see related assignments. Here I can see which tasks are scheduled to finish before this task can start. And uh, there aren't any in this particular example. But I can also see which tasks are dependent on this task's finish date. And here we can see what the impact would be if I didn't complete my work on time. I can also see when these other tasks are due to start and when they're due to finish. And who's been assigned to them. Below that, there's also a notes section. And this is where you as a team member can provide notes back to the project manager. So an example here might be the project manager has assigned you two days to work on a particular task. But you know from prior experience that that task is going to take at least five days. This is where you can voice your concern and send it back to the project manager. For now, I'll go back. So within this area here, where I can see the task listed, I can also see the calendar view. What I'll do is I'll actually populate this and I'll say that that particular day I have actually done eight hours of work. When I click away from that, I'm notified that there are unsaved updates. So if I hit save, I can then select that particular task and I can send the status update on the selected tasks back to the project manager. I can also provide a note. Now that the task update has been submitted for approval, what I'll do is I'll go back to the home page and I'll log back in as myself, as the project manager. So log back in as myself, I can see under approvals that I have two task updates from resources pending my approval. So if I click there, I can see the uh, status updates coming through, and here's the one from Robert Hardy. If I click on that particular task name there, I can see the note that I submitted back. Hi Baz, here is my update. That's fine. Cancel out of that for now. What I've also got the option to do is actually select that particular update, and I can preview the update prior to accepting it. So this happens up within Project Web App, and what you'll see shortly is a Gantt chart. And here we go. This is a task that I updated on, Interpret Requirements. And we can see that that is highlighted in yellow because that is a change that has occurred. And thankfully, everything is still within baseline, so no other change impact. I'm happy with that. So what I'll do now is I will click Accept, and I can provide an update back. Hi, Rob. Good work. So that was a very quick look at work allocation within Microsoft Project Server 2010. And we also saw how you can collaborate on projects and provide updates in a centralized location. There's a lot more to Project Server. And please do have a look at the rest of our YouTube channel, Wellington PPM. But if you would like more information, then please get in touch. Now, PPM in a box is our pre-built Microsoft Project Server 2010 deployment package. It's designed to get your organization up and running within 12 days at a fixed price. To get full details on the package itself, then please visit our website, which is wellingtonppm.co.uk. On the website, you can also request a callback, and a member of our team will be in touch with you within 24 hours.